Do we really need another women's prize reaction video? No, we don't, but I'm making one anyway. <laughs> everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Rick and Beers, and today I come here from my apartment, so please bear with the noise. I live in a very busy, chaotic street. I'll try to tone it down as much as I can, but there is no escaping. <laughs> and I come from this chaotic space to talk to you about the Women's Prize. This is a bonus video and I wasn't going to make it, but for some reason, this year in particular, I've been following a lot of Women's Prize prediction videos and a lot of Women's Prize reaction videos to the long list. I am just so confused and so amused. So I thought I would bring you the perspective of someone who doesn't read a lot of new releases. There was a time where I was traveling a lot and I was watching a lot of booktube and I was getting a lot of new books and a lot of them were very disappointing. There are so many factors that go with the industry nowadays and with social media and with whatever is going on outside of the literary world. Yeah, these prizes are fascinating. In particular, prizes like the Women's Prize, Booker Prize, that are very politics driven. I'm fascinated. So today I thought, as someone who hasn't read any of these books, I would tell you what I've gathered about them and what people feel about them and we could just have a conversation and you could maybe recommend some of them to me to be picked up in the future if I keep hearing good reviews. Okay, so the first one is The Vanish in Half by Brit Bennett. I know this is a riff of Nella Larson's passing, except it's about two sisters, one who passes as white and chooses to marry a white man and pass as a white woman, and then one that marries a black man and she's part of this whole black community. I don't have an interest in reading this because I love the themes in Nella Larson's passing, but I didn't feel it was such an accomplished novel in writing style terms. I might reread it, and actually I would rather reread that. I've heard that a lot of people love the plot, but the prose is just, you know, so I am not interested in that. Then we have Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. I know nothing about this book, but this one sounds interesting because it's set in 1957 in Southeast London and it's about a journalist trapped in life of duty and disappointment from which there is no likelihood of escape and then a woman Gretchen Tilbury contacts the paper to claim that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth so that is interesting. I would go to a bookstore and pick this up if it's done in a cheeky non to take him too serious way and it's satirical and it's fun I might enjoy it. Then we have Piranesi by Susanna Clark. She's the author of Doctor Strange, Mr. Strange and Mr. Norrell. Yeah, Strange and Norrell, that book that is huge and has a show and I would like to read it sometime. This one I didn't care about until I heard the description of and it's about this man who lives in a really big house with all these rooms and there's like a presence and that might be Piranesi. Again, for me with these things it's up to prose. If it's good then I will want to read it. Then we have Amanda Craig's The Golden Rule and man are people upset that Amanda Craig is on this list. One person that I've seen is not mad about it. So that was interesting to see. The Golden Rule is a riff on Strangers on a Train and I'm getting tired of riffs on things. I know it's a bit hypocritical because a lot of classics riff on some other things. It just feels like Disney rehashing their same stories instead of coming up with new ones and that is always sad. But I have to admit that I am curious about two women meeting on a train from different you know socioeconomic backgrounds and volunteering to kill each other's husbands. I think it's an interesting concept but it's because Strangers on a Train is an interesting concept and again I would rather read that because I've never read a mystery or like a thriller by Patricia Highsmith and I think I'm due for one so yeah. Then we have Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan and this is sold as for 
millennial fans of normal people. I am very ambivalent about Sally Rooney. I think some of what she's written is actually really good. I really enjoy her essays and I think Conversations with Friends is very interesting and I'm sure Nisha Dolan is very tired of people discussing Sally Rooney whenever <laughs> she pops up. I'm sorry. You feel like it needs a preface because that severely determines your attitude towards this book which again is very very sad this is about a woman who lives in china and she's dating a businessman there and she kind of likes him but is lukewarm about it and then she meets a woman and they also have a relationship <sighs> Moment. I like everyday narratives and I like character studies but I need to see how this book is written before I can consider reading it because when you tell me about normal people if you just tell me what the book is about I would want to read it it's just that reading it the actual sentence by sentence writing is torture and I tried twice Again, I'm talking about Sally Rooney, aren't I? That is my way of saying that I don't know. I just don't know. Then there is Burnt Sugar, also nominated for the Booker. This is about a mother and a daughter. Um, sorry, this is by Avni Doshi and it's supposed to be very intense. Is the writing in here any good? Because I would be up for an intense, dark mother-daughter relationship, something that is not saccharine. I would be up for that. See, here's the thing with the Women's Prize. I distrust the choices and sometimes books that sound good. I feel like because they are nominated, I suddenly start distrusting because they are harping so much on accessibility and it needs to be accessible and I don't know, which doesn't happen with Booker or at least it didn't until the joint win thing because even if the long lists are messy and weird, I feel like I've had a lot of success with Booker winners, but women's prize winners, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. This is all I'm saying. Then we have Dawn French because of you. Didn't know this at all, but apparently she's a comedian and people love her. The All Millennium in, Turns Into the New. Oh, that's interesting. There is a hospital, two, oh, very different women give birth to two very similar daughters. And one lives with a baby and the other lives with no baby. It says the gods who keep watch over brokenhearted mothers break mighty revenge. So it's supposed to be a bit epic and I don't know. It sounds messy, doesn't it? It could work if it's a satire, if it doesn't take itself too seriously, if, you know, the humor makes a point and then we have Claire Fuller's Unsettled Ground and apparently Claire Fuller writes like a book a year and people have vastly different reactions to her yeah just the cover makes me so not interested then Yag Yassi's Transcendent Kingdom which I was so interested in it's about a neuroscientist and she works on lab rats and she's trying to find the reason behind depression or something like that and it's about faith and I love all those things as someone who grew up in a religious household as someone who loves neuroscience i love campus novels academic books it sounds like everything i would want to read but then someone in bookstagram shared a paragraph of it and it was just very meh i would be open to reading this take it out from the library at some point how the one armed sister sweeps her home by carrie jones this is set in Barbados and it says Lala's grandmother Wilma tells the story of the one-armed sister, a cautionary tale about what happens to girls who disobey their mothers. It says it's a story of three marriages out of a beautiful island. It sounds random, I don't know. It's human drama so maybe i know it's a marketing thing and the authors don't have that much control in how their books are marketed especially the blurb thing but just from that blurb alone um no thank you then we have luster by raymond lalani i've heard about this book so much this is one i'm ultimately interested in checking out again depending on how it's written i love 
tense love triangles. I know a lot of people hate love triangles and I understand because it comes from the YA this taste of there is clearly one that the protagonist is going to stay with. But in reality, things get messy. Attachments that people develop are something that I'm very interested in, but it has to not be cliche, it has to not be saccharine, it has to be not overly dramatic. And I think a particularly successful version of the getting into a marriage love triangle is English Animals by Laura Kay, I want to say. That book, although not extraordinary, is very fun to read and very engaging and it is well written and it accomplishes the voice of someone whose English is very very good but slightly off because it's still a second language brilliantly. I thought that was so extraordinary how she did that. Talking about it makes me want to read it. It is a fun, devourable, compulsively readable book and I think that was nominated for the Women's Prize, right? I waited years to read that and I have no regrets because I wasn't, you know, bamboozled. I've been bamboozled too much, that's the thing. In any case, Luster. So yeah, this is about a young woman who gets involved with a marriage and specifically I think the husband of that marriage is white and she's black so there's a race issue there I don't know the race of the wife and I don't know if it matters but yeah it's supposed to get very tense and I keep just reading this side because I thought I was going to put the pictures on this side but I think I might put them here then no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood which I've heard enough reviews to know that it is not good and it is interesting about an internet famous person who goes around the world to talk about internet fame. Don't get me wrong, I love that. I think we definitely need more narratives of the internet. But the problem with this book is that it's apparently written in vignette and it basically could have been a Twitter thread and it's a book because it's Patricia Lockwood and I would read Priest Daddy and I have some of her poetry. I haven't gotten to it yet but it's supposed to be really good so I would read that but clearly there is not much novelizing going on here it feels very lazy and maybe it's not maybe it's really and I'm missing out I do like things like Maggie Nelson I mean I've read one Maggie Nelson book and I liked it <laughs> yeah I don't know is this any good I think we need a lot of fully baked internet novels because the internet is important we should be reading and talking about it it's just that i don't know if this is the way and then there is consent by annabelle lyon and this looks like a porn novel a fancy porn novel it's it's very artsy it's about twins one of them is focused on her studies and the other is glamorous and thrill-seeking yeah apparently there's a big sibling thing going this year i don't know i'm an only child so people tell me do you want to read about siblings especially this year maybe after the pandemic here's the thing i like reading about siblings and i love reading about twins oh but it doesn't say if they're identical twins because i meant identical twins i feel like as an individual if there was someone out there looking exactly like me but you know they are not you. I think that is a little uncanny and I like that idea. Perhaps because I'm a Gemini, who knows? The end of the blurb. Gradually, Sarah and Saskia learned that both their sisters' lives and indeed their own have been altered by the devastating actions of one man. Wait, who's Sarah? Because it was Saskia and Jenny. Oh, Sarah and Maddie are sisters with another difficult dynamic. Maddie needs almost full-time care while Sarah loves nothing more than fine wines. You see that? No. Maybe it's brilliant, I wouldn't know, but the point of this video is to judge books by their cover and their blurbs. So then we have Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon and no idea. Oh, this is the, is there such a thing as a perfect marriage book? The collective reaction of people who hadn't heard of this book but then read the blurb and read that sentence is no. Just no. And again, I feel like that's unfair because it's not the author's fault, most likely, and the person who wrote that blurb should be fired, but it's what we have to go by as readers. 
so we have two more books one is the transition baby by tori peters and this is about someone who decided to transition as a trans woman but then decided to detransition and is married i think to a woman and decide to have a baby but there is like a third person and it's this odd family dynamic honestly i was interested in this before i read an excerpt that i really really hated i hated everything that was in there i just don't think it's a book that i would enjoy it isn't particularly well written either but the contents of that passage were deeply alarming to me and don't get me wrong i love things that explore darker themes but the way this was done i just felt very icky about so yeah and then finally we have summer by alice smith which again a lot of people are confused by because supposedly this is not the best in the quartet the best is either winter or spring depending on who you ask but i feel like winter is the fan favorite i've been waiting to read all of them together not because i want the omnibus and not because i feel like the experience will be better i was terrified that i was going to buy one edition and then i would have to order the other ones and they wouldn't match so i've been waiting until i can buy all four of them in one go yes i am that stupid sometimes i don't know what this is about but i know it's very current and i know it was delivered almost on printing date for the manuscript and it's very immediate and it's something only Alice Smith could do and I know also that she doesn't necessarily always submit to literary prizes so a lot of people are wondering whether she wasn't nominated before because she didn't submit or because the judges overlooked for example Winter which is supposed to be the best one and then they are giving her the summer nomination because she needs to be nominated because she's Alice Smith and because the whole quartet needs to be rewarded in a way again with the politics you see you there is strategizing there is concession it's very interesting how these things go i also hate that a lot of the times writing is not discussed it's always about what the book is about and are the characters like this or like that are the dynamics like this like that but books are written that's the thing if i want to see this dynamic play out in another medium i can watch a film go see a play well i can't go and see the play but you know what i mean i can listen to a song i can see a painting there is something about books that is unique and that is the writing so yeah that's i find interesting that the writing itself doesn't come up in conversation as often as it should anyways i hope you like this very uninformed video that was the point i didn't want to google anything else about these books because i feel like the fun in it is what i received via osmosis just being on bookstagram and booktube and watching all these videos and listening to all this discourse just wanted to make that sort of weird reaction videos i enjoyed you filming it let me know if i said anything completely wrong if you've read these books that is totally admissible please do let me know what you think or are you planning on reading any of these do you follow lists like this if i did i would follow the book here international that is interesting and you know what also i like although they've disappointed me on many occasions in particular with all the light we cannot see which i don't remember if it won the pulitzer of the national book award but the fact that this book was nominated at all for anything is mind-boggling but apart from that i like to know what wins the pulitzer i'm always interested in knowing what wins the pulitzer and the national book award so i hope you enjoyed this if you liked it please give a thumbs up please subscribe and comment again have you read any of these books have i said anything completely wrong about them if you've read them please do let me know remember to follow me on twitter and instagram everything's down below and to listen to the bibliophile daily which is also linked down below it's on many platforms and it's my daily podcast of bookish and literary historical facts so yeah that's it see you next time